Massajana. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's a nice, lively greeting. Hello. Hi, Eva. Okay. Good morning. Today is what day? Wednesday. Wednesday. And it is October 9th. Wednesday, October 9th. Okay. And on Wednesdays, what mystery of the rosary do we contemplate on? Glorious. Uh, glorious, Chevelle. Thank you. Very good. Glorious mysteries. And what is the first glorious mystery? It's the resurrection. The resurrection. Okay, so today is our day to try and uh, understand what the resurrection is. When we say try to understand, that's really quite a task for everybody because the resurrection is a mystery. Right? It's a mystery. What is a mystery? What do we understand? Huh, Jacob? A truth that cannot be explained. A truth that cannot be explained. Well, yes, it is a truth. But yes, it can be explained to an extent. To an extent that we are able to. To an extent that our limited minds can comprehend. Right? Um, because if it is not completely... Um, um, understood if it is inexplicable in every way then uh, it will not appeal at all to our intellectual uh, um, consciousness and so our Lord revealed these things and in fact our Lord lived these mysteries um, himself so that we would at least have some experience of it and we would at least have some knowledge of it no matter how limited okay? so for example today's mystery <clears throat> the first glorious mystery the resurrection it's not like we don't know anything about it because we know for a fact that after three days that he was uh, dead and buried in that uh, uh, tomb where they placed his body in well he resurrected himself. He became alive again. Okay? Those are facts. So we know up to a certain point what the mystery is all about. Christ bringing himself back to life. Not like Lazarus or the, the young man who uh, was the only son of a widow. Right? They could not resurrect themselves. Okay, it was Jesus Christ who brought them back to life. So the big difference here is that Jesus Christ, by his own power, brought himself back to life. So those kinds of things we could understand, we could comprehend. But perhaps the big question is, well, how did that happen? How was he able to bring himself back to life? Well, then that is what is the big mystery there. Because, well... We are not God. Our minds and intellects are not God's intellect. So we could not comprehend how that can happen. And in fact, even the brightest scientists could not explain how that happened. Right? Um, the Shroud of Turin, for example, which is uh, said to be the relic uh, of the uh, resurrection because it... it, it uh, it bore all of the uh, imprints of our Lord's wounds mysteriously also, right? Because uh, it, all the scientists who have studied it uh, have concluded that this shroud was not painted over, that uh, it's not just the work of a genius artist who uh, one day thought of uh, painting on a piece of cloth, right? Uh, the shroud itself was proven to have been um, of a particular date and of a particular uh, uh, point in history, uh, which is basically around the time our Lord resurrected. In that uh, the pigments on the cloth that reflected the wounds of our Lord are not paint, are not of any material that was known to science. Okay? So uh, that is one big evidence 
uh, a mystery still of the resurrection. So our Lord uh, not only brought himself back to life, but he left proof right, that he wanted uh, to leave with us in order to strengthen our belief and our faith on the fact that he brought himself back to life after three days of staying in the tomb. And so let's, let's recall the scene and let's help ourselves relive the, the days, that day, that Sunday of the, uh, of the resurrection so it can help us pray the rosary more devoutly. Okay? So what are the first things that uh, Matthew, St. Matthew talks about in his gospel? So he describes how women, Mary of Magdala and Mary, the uh, mother of James and John, Right, uh, rushed to the tomb early on Sunday morning. They rushed to the tomb because they wanted to put more spices on our Lord's body to try to preserve it. Right, because that's the custom of the Jews. When he died, it was almost Sabbath uh, when they buried him. So the women were thinking, well, we weren't able to really uh, preserve him well and put put the spices uh, as much as uh, uh, they needed to. Right. So they, they thought, okay, let's just make the Sabbath go. And then after the Sabbath, we'll come back very early on Sunday morning and uh, finish the job. Finish the job of, of putting more spices. And so they did. They did as they had planned very early on Sunday morning. But what happened? In the first place, when they were about to go there, they were perhaps thinking along the way, wait a minute, there's a big stone that covers that tomb. How are we going to uh, open that open the tomb we well, there are only two women <laughs> how are we we're not strong enough to roll that that huge uh, rock that covers the the mouth of that cave how are we going to do this but they did not care said so maybe they thought to themselves oh uh, there must be some people around there. there there might be some men you know just milling around there we'll ask their help see they didn't even bother to solve that one very big problem which is how they were going to roll the stone okay? they didn't even bother to ask the apostles anymore because maybe they thought oh you know what they're still so afraid of the jews they couldn't come out in the open because they don't know what the jews are going to do to them so they were there all uh, in that in that upper room the Seneca, uh where they had the last supper where they last met jesus and they're still all huddled, huddled up there and uh, scared about the consequences. Oh, yeah, Ava. Scared about the consequences of this whole crucifixion. They didn't know what to do. So the women just went ahead. Went ahead. Yes, yes you women, Ava. <laughs> okay. And when they got there, what did they see? When they got there, what did they see? The stone was already rolled. On the one side and so perhaps they might have thought to themselves well our problem is solved right our problem is solved so but then when they got there when they got there and they looked around you see there's nobody here anymore and the linen cloth that wrapped Jesus was neatly uh, folded onto one side of that stone slab where he lay right and then there are two versions to this, to this story from this point. One is, they found an angel uh, sitting by the head of that, of that um, uh, slab of stone and asked them, what are you doing here, ladies? Then they asked, well, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Right? And then he told them, well, he has resurrected. He's not in the tomb. And he told you about that. He told you about that that he was going to resurrect. So what are you doing here? Right? It was like the angel was questioning their faith. Okay? And then the other version is Mary Magdalene was there first. Right? And that when she when she got there she also did not find the uh, the body of Jesus and then somebody asked her uh, woman who are you looking for? And then she goes, well, she, she thought it was the gardener who asked her that question. She didn't recognize Jesus, right? And 
She said, well, uh, if, if you took him away, please tell me where you put him and I'm going to go get him. Okay? And Jesus said, Mary. And all of a sudden, Mary of Mag uh, Magdalene realized this was Jesus. So she goes, bows down to her and says, Rabboni. See? Rabboni, teach her. And then Jesus tells her, don't cling to me yet. I haven't gone to my father. But you go to my brothers, to the apostles, and tell them that you've seen me. <clears throat> tell them that I had resurrected as I told you. Strengthen your brothers. Strengthen them. Make them understand that I really resurrected already. Go tell them the good news so that they would not be scared. And then <clears throat> Mary goes off with that mission of announcing the good news to the apostles. And what do the apostles do? What do the apostles do? All of a sudden they start rushing out of that cenacle with Peter. The big coward Peter who denied our Lord three times. But this time wants to be the first. He was rushing, rushing, rushing. Wants to be the first there to, to witness the uh, the resurrection. Right? Of course, all repentant that he denied Christ three times. He was so sorry about it. And he wants to prove to Jesus Christ, I love you. That's why I'll be the first one to go there. <coughs> to witness the resurrection. <coughs> Excuse me. But when he gets there, doesn't see anything, right? Doesn't see anything. And actually, actually, John, John outpaced Peter in the race to the tomb. And John got there first, right? His Peter was older. Maybe he was a little bit more. <laughs> but John, who was a lot younger than Peter, got there first. But look, look at how St. John gives respect and deference to Peter. St. John did not enter the tomb. He allowed Peter, who was lagging behind, the prince of the apostles, he allowed him to witness it first. Beautiful story of humility of St. John, right? At the same time, the respect that he had for the primacy of Peter. He wanted Peter to have the first look. And of course, when Peter got in and saw nothing, then John walks in to witness the same thing. Nothing. See? But this nothing, nothingness that they saw was actually proof to them of something, of the big something, the big thing of the resurrection. So many times... In our lives, the same thing happens. When, 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 we feel, when we feel like we are down, when we feel like we are weighed down by sin, when we feel like we are so discouraged because our struggles go nowhere, it's like the defeat. It's like the so-called defeat of the cross. Some people think that the cross is a defeat of Jesus Christ. Some people think that Christ dying on the cross was his defeat. That he was defeated. Sometimes we feel like that also, right? When we try to struggle to be good, to become saints, and we feel like it's so hard, and, and we keep failing, and we keep committing sin, and, and we fail. Sometimes it feels like we're defeated. But the resurrection reminds us that the nothingness we feel, sometimes we feel emptiness inside of us, like that empty tomb, is actually a sign of the resurrection is actually the sign of hope that we are not really totally without hope we are not totally useless we are not totally beaten up we are not totally defeated because there is resurrection there is the resurrection our Lord is going to bring us back to life our Lord is going to give us and share with us the glory of his resurrection but, but, we should not get discouraged with our struggles. We should not get discouraged with our failures. We should not be weighed down by the many difficult things we need to hurdle to become saints. Discouragement is the enemy 
of hope and resurrection. Okay? So we should never allow the devil to get the better of us. We should keep prodding on. We should keep struggling. We should keep fighting against temptation. We should keep fighting against sin. Because death is a consequence of, of our sinfulness. And if we want to rise from that death the way Jesus did, we have to keep our hope anchored on the resurrection. We have to keep our spirits, you know, uh, 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 up there all the time, knowing that we will resurrect if we only keep the struggle going. And this is the hope of the resurrection. That's why this is the biggest feast of the church, Easter, okay, resurrection, because it is the celebration of the triumph of Christ over death. The triumph of eternal life over sin. Okay? This is the whole beauty of our faith. That we do not believe in the cross as a sign of defeat. It is actually just the beginning of glory. It is actually the throne upon which Christ was to bring about the biggest hope. That we are all hoping to, to participate in. And what is that? The resurrection and being with God forever in heaven. See? So the practical application of this mystery for our lives as we contemplate it in the rosary, especially today, okay, the glorious mysteries, it is to always bolster that hope in us. That in our life, no matter how much difficulty we encounter, physically, materially, spiritually, financially or otherwise if we only keep our focus on the third day right as we are going through this tunnel this this tunnel of of uh of hardship in life there is always the third day there is always that day when these things will come to pass and there is a resurrection but we need to keep our sights focused on that resurrection on the hope that one day our Lord will set us free from these struggles and these difficulties. And that is the basis of our faith. And that's why it's called faith. Because you cannot see it yet. It's somewhere at the end of the tunnel. But it will come if only we do not get discouraged along the way. If only we keep barreling through the tunnel of life. Because at the end of it is the resurrection. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see each other tomorrow again, hopefully. Now we're off to Mass. Bye.